I've had an interest in clocks for as long as I can remember. I built my first digital clock about 40 years ago. Uh, this isn't the original one that I built, but it's, it's similar to it. I built this 15 or 20 years ago. And it's just an array of LEDs with a red filter case that allows you to see them a little better. And this is what's called a binary coded decimal clock. There are three sections to the LEDs. The first section has two rows that show you the number of seconds, then the number of minutes, and the number of hours. And if you look at this counting, it's, it's got the bottom LED, which is a 1, then the top one is 2, the next one's 2, and then 4, and then 8. And right now it's at 7, the top one's 8, the top and the bottom is 9, it just carried over to 10. 1, 2, the bottom 2 is 3, 4, bottom 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and carry over. Uh, when I was a classroom teacher, I used to take this clock and put it in front of my classroom, leave it there the whole year. I would never tell the kids what it was, what you could do with it. By the end of the year, most of them had figured out it was a clock and they figured out how to read it. More recently, I found a kit that allowed you to make basically the same clock. This is using surface mount LEDs, much harder to read because they're tiny, but it does basically the same thing. These clocks have an extremely bright display. You can see, you might think those were showing different times, but this one's set for a 24-hour clock. This one's set for a 12-hour clock, so it's 2 p.m. or 1,400 hours. And to make that, this is what's used. There's a four-segment uh, 8x8 LED matrix. So you've got 8x8 eight eight LEDs here, four of them, so it's 8x32. And as you can see, it gives you a very nice bright display. That's connected to a microcontroller. Let me pull it off the board. This is a WeMOS D1, and it's an ESP8266 device, which means, first of all, it's compatible with the Arduino IDE. You can program this with the Arduino uh, environment. And it also has Wi-Fi built in. Now, why would you want Wi-Fi? Well, what this thing can do that's really cool for a clock is it can attach to my wireless network. It can go out on the wireless network to the internet, get the current time, and set the clock on the display. Let me fire it up. I'm going to put a piece of red uh, acrylic on top of this so you can see it a little better. I just have a little USB uh, power pack, and I'm going to plug that in. And it says right now, connecting. In a moment, it'll show the IP address which is 192.168.81, yeah, 268.1.216. It turned the brightness up, and now it's saying time, and there we have the same time as the other two. Uh, there's not a whole lot to this. It's, again, it's just that Wemos uh, ESP8266 and the display. I found this uh, project on YouTube, and I'll put a link to it in the uh, description. And it, you can see it's a very readable, automatically set precise clock. But I wanted to add something to it. As you saw in the, uh, the introductory uh, video, I wanted it to do the same thing as my mantel clock up in the living room. I wanted it to do Westminster chimes. Westminster chimes at a quarter after the hour, half past the hour, three quarters past the hour, and on the hour, it brings out a set of tones. And on the hour, it also bongs out the number of hours. Now we're coming up on uh, uh, 215, so in about, I don't know, something less than a minute, you'll hear coming from this speaker uh, one of the Westminster chimes. How does that done? Well, in addition to the Wemos and the, the LED display, there's a small device called a DF player. This is an MP3 player, not very big, about the size of the top of my thumb, and it has a micro SD card attached to it, and on that are... Whoop, quarter after the hour. A little flat, but not too bad. Um, all of the files for the sounds that come out of this are on that uh, MP3 card. And I happened to uh, take these files, found them on the internet, and I adjusted them a little bit using a program called Audacity. There are six files. One file for the quarter after that you just heard, a file for the 30 after, 45 minutes after the hour, and another longer file for the, uh, uh, on the hour. And then it's got the bongs. Well, it's got two different bongs. It's got a short bong, and it's got one that has a long tail that's actually the last one that's played in any sequence, so it kind of trails off when it's done. 
Let's take a look at the schematic, and before we do that, you might notice in the upper right-hand corner there are three more of the clocks that I've been playing with. This one is also binary coded decimal, only this one does hundreds of a second, seconds, minutes, hours, days, months, and year, uh, and a couple of uh, OLED uh, display digital clocks that also connect to the uh, Wi-Fi. Actually, all three of those connect to Wi-Fi for setting. All right, here's the schematic, and as you can see, there are three main parts. This is the ESP8266, the WeMOS, and there are not too many connections to it. It wants five volts, that connects here. That can come from uh, the USB, that can come from a separate five volt power supply, it can come from a, uh, a five volt uh, USB charger. It connects here to a potentiometer that also goes to five volts and ground, and that potentiometer connects to uh, pin two, which is A0, analog to digital zero, and that allows you to adjust the brightness. There are three pins, this one, this one, and this one, that connect down to the LED display, and there are five connections total to the LED display, three from the ESP8266 plus ground and the same five volts that we had up here. Between the ESP8266 and the DF player, there are two connections. This one has a 1K resistor and it goes between pin 20, which is D1, and the receive. That's where the commands that tell the DF player what to do are carried. This also, of course, has 5 volts on it, ground. And this pin here goes to the busy uh, connection on the DF player. It tells the ESP8266 whether the DF player is done playing a particular uh, audio file or not. And again, it needs five volts in ground. The speaker connects here. These are the connections that give you a loud speaker, loudspeaker volume. It wants an eight ohm speaker. Don't try to use a four ohm because you're gonna get feedback and distortion and all kind of bad things happen. These two pins here are not shown uh, connected to anything on the schematic, but these are the left and right channel for a uh, line out. So if you connect these two plus ground to the three connections on a uh, stereo amplifier, you can amplify the audio very clearly. So that's really about it for the schematic. As far as wiring is concerned, it's no big deal. Just point to point wiring as is displayed uh, on the schematic and you should be in good shape. Well, that's about it for the uh, Westminster chimes on the digital clock, with one possible exception. What I'm working on right now is to add hands, analog hands, to the, uh, the Westminster chime digital clock so that it really no longer will be digital. I guess in a way it will be. Uh, I'd like to show you how far I've gotten. It's not done yet. That's why you're not getting a video about doing this. It still probably has a week or two until I'm happy with it. But uh, right now it's showing about the same time, 241. If I hit reset on the uh, Arduino, notice what it does. It's going to zero. It's going to go to noon so it knows where it is. Pause a couple seconds to get the time. And then it's going to set itself to the current time. There we go. Two. Bob 42. Again, it's not quite ready for prime time, but this is something I should have ready to show, I'm hoping, in a couple of weeks. Thank you.